Evolve 131. It was our 10th anniversary show. It was live on the WWE Network, which was the first time ever that a non-WWE show was on that network. I mean, like, current product-wise. So that's pretty cool. And it had WWE guys on the show. Uh, the the show opened, it was a... Yeah, I thought it only had NXT guys. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> I couldn't Lord. help it. Uh, 205 guys were on there. That's right. I stand yeah. corrected. There you go. It was literally 205 Live versus NXT <laughs> with some of these matches. But the first match, um, Josh Briggs, which is a big dude, uh, pinned Anthony Green with a chokelift powerbomb. He calls the M6. Uh, anything remarkable you want to talk about that match? Because Ramon said he really liked that Josh Briggs guy. Uh, no, it was, it was a match. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this next one, it was Stephen Wolf defeated Kurt Stallion, Harlem Bravado, and Sean Mulata, or Mulatu, or Gosh, I can't pronounce this dude's name. Maluda. He's Sean that Maluda. good. Yeah. <laughs> he won with a 450 splash on Harlem Bravado. I this was just a match for me. Again, uh, same. Yeah, uh, Arturo Ruas defeated Anthony Henry. This one shocked me. He beat him with a reverse roundhouse. Ruas looked like uh, looked like he dove into uh, Steve Blackman's gear bag. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he, he was wearing like black gi pants and some kind, some kind of karate belt. And uh, I, Anthony Henry, I thought, was the one that actually looked like a wrestler and was going to. I mean, not that Ruas didn't, but yeah, it just didn't end how I thought it was going to end. Uh, this next one was the one that they made a gif out of this match. And the person they made a gif out of didn't even win. Brandy Lauren, she defeated Shotzi Blackheart in a no disqualification match uh, via pinfall with about after about a dozen kendo stick shots. It's about a, it was kind of an anticlimactic ending because she just was beat the crap out of her with a kendo stick and then just pinned her. Mm. Uh, do you rem- did did you really watch this? Uh, only because I like Shotzi. Yeah, I did. Oh, you know who she is? Yeah, she used to wrestle in APW here. Ah, okay. I've I never heard of either one of these women. Uh, the uh, gift for just for fun, let me let everyone know. Shotzi is the female wrestler you might have seen that sells pictures of her on the toilet. Not joking. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wait. For anyone who's curious, look it up. She was selling pictures of herself. Dropping feces on the toilet. Oh, you guys my. with fetishes. So she, you can't make this up. And so, <laughs> if guy, if if you ever wondered what Shotzi Blackheart looks like uh, dropping timber, then <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, what the hell, man? That's the weirdest fact I ever thought I'd learn today. <laughs> uh, she has long. Again, can't bright make it green, up. She has long, bright green hair uh, and, like, wears dark lipstick, and she's, like, a punk rocker-looking chick. Uh, Brandy Lauren looks like, you know, the girl next door. Gorgeous. Uh, Shotzi got the gift made of her because I think Brandy Lauren set up a, uh, like, this just thing of chairs outside, like, sitting them all up like they were going to have a dinner party. Shotzi like dove through the ropes. Brandy moved, and Shotzi just like went face first into the ton of chairs at ringside. It was nuts. This next one, man, Baba Tunde defeated Colby Carino with a big splash. For those of you that don't know, yes, Colby Carino is the son of Steve Carino, and Baba Tunde, AKA the king of old school. Yes. And Baba Tunde was the uh, was in the Greatest Royal Rumble. Do you remember that? Unfortunately, he is a big dude, and he's not like terrible from what I saw here. 
Colby Carino looks like he needs to eat a sandwich. Uh, he's a <laughs> he's a little dude, but he's got hair like his dad used to, like the bleach blonde. Like looks like he dies. It looks like he bleaches it out with peroxide. But yeah, apparently he's in a group called the Unwanted, and he's the Unwanted Son, and he's in it with Eddie Kingston and Joe Gacy. I didn't know Eddie Kingston was in Evolve, but he is. He's the unwanted king. He's on his way to NXT at some point. Well, he's worked long enough to get there. I'll say that. But It'd be yeah. a little weird if he gets around Keith Lee. You know, they can fight over me a yim. But oh man. Well, I would pick uh, Keith Lee in that fight because that's a big dude. I'll tell you. He's huge. Not that Eddie is small, but, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to bask in Keith's glory. I'll say that. <laughs> but the Unwanted were the Evolved Tag Team Champions. I say were because they lost to the Skulk, which was A.R. I, Fox and Leon Ruff. I was shocked there was a towel change on this card, honestly. But... Uh, I figured they needed at least one. Because well, I knew it wasn't gonna be the last match, so yeah. Well, well, of course not. Uh, yeah, Leon Ruff. At first, I was like, "Is that ACH?" And I'm like, "Oh wait, no." It, like they did a close up of him. I'm like, "No, it's definitely not ACH." Uh, I haven't seen AR Fox in years, so it was cool. But they won with a 450 splash from Fox. And then the whole group, there was like a ton of them. They all got in the ring, stood in a circle, and danced in the center of the ring while the crowd yelled, dance, dance, dance. <sighs> mm-hmm. It was something. Real. Real news. <laughs> uh, this one is a really good match. Matt Riddle defeated Drew Gulak with a gotched tombstone pile driver. Bro. He actually came out, even though he is the king of bros now, he came out in one of his original bro outfits. So that's cool. They had a really good match. Crowd was super hyped for them. They both did their, uh, what do they call it, Uh, catch point. They did that catch point taunt at the end together. It was awesome. It was a nice little throwback because Drew Gulak and Matt Riddle used to be a thing in, uh, in Evolve. Uh, after this, the lights cut out. When they came back on, Paul Heyman was in the center of the ring. The crowd, they were in the old ECW arena, for those of you that don't know. The crowd lost their flipping minds. They acted like Jesus just came down from the heavens. (laughs) He said about the Jewish man. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't even think about it, but yeah, you're right. But yeah, he said, uh... He never, ever, uh, he said he's always gotten offers to show up at the ECW arena for various things. He's always turned them down. No, you don't say. Memories, yeah. But he says, of, you know, he never wanted to go there because of memories and stuff. But he, saw, he felt this was the perfect time, you know, because they're on the WWE Network. <laughs> like, nah, I had nothing to do with it. Don't assume. Oh, oh yeah, that had, that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wow, you you mean I can actually be seen now? Sure, I'll go. Uh, but someone yeah, shows pop- up and asks him for their money. You never paid them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you sure none of my former employees are going to be there? Awesome. All right, I'll be there. <laughs> but he showed up. He cut a cool promo. Uh, he really put over Evolve strong, and he said that he was going to wrap it up because he's a fat guy and he's sweating his ass off. They still um, have never gotten air conditioning in that building. Yeah, that's crazy. Just like they still hold wrestling in there on a regular basis. And nope, forget it. Screw you guys. Like, I don't get that. But whatever. I think it's just called the arena now, by the way. <clears throat> uh, the Philadelphia arena, right? Something like that. Um, perhaps. I don't remember. But yeah. Um, he had, he ring announced the next match because he said these guys were the future. It was a uh, title unification match between the Evolved champion Austin Theory and the 
WWN World Wrestling Network champion JD Drake. Uh, Austin Theory looked like a million bucks. I mean, what did you think of this? Loved it. I thought it was a fantastic match. Uh, I, I actually thought it was probably the best match of the night. Me too. And I thought it had I the expected most I expected the last match to be that, but <laughs> yeah, I mean the the last match was great, but uh, I didn't think it was as good. And this one, they really put over the meaning of Evolve and their championship. And Austin Theory won with uh, I guess he calls his finisher the uh, Atax Ataxia. I, I can't remember what it was. Taxidermia. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but. But afterwards, he like. This is the word I can think of. I, do you know, is WWN going away? Not to my knowledge. Because, well, because he like. Buried I don't it, think WWN's a thing. I think it's like a. It's, it's like a. I mean, I don't think it's a single company. I think it's a huge thing that owns multiple different companies. Yeah. Because well, I've always I, seen it say WWN presents, like, Evolve. Right. Well, or they, Shimmer. I, yeah, it's kind of like I mean, in a very, very lesser sense, the uh, it, it's it's kind of like the NWA. Oh, I mean, time, you can even compare it to modern day WWE. WWE presents NXT, presents Raw, SmackDown. Yeah, stuff like I mean, some sort of lines. like that. Yeah, that's what I thought uh, it was. Well, the reason I'm saying that is because Theory buries the championship at the end because he he has both titles. He throws the end of the WWN title down, steps on it. And then he holds up the, the Evolve title and says, this is the most meaningful championship in Evolve. This is meaningful and blah, 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 and really puts it over strong, which is cool. Like I said, he also buried the WWN title. So weird. Well, perhaps WWE bought Evolve from them or something. <laughs> Maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, I, I, because they're not streaming on you know whatever service this usually streams on. Oh. Uh, and they're, I think it's WWN's actual service, right? Uh, I think so. I don't. I can't. I, don't they call it something, or is it just WWN? Uh, WWN. Uh, I don't. I don't, honestly don't remember. I thought it was just WWN streaming. It might be, um, but yeah. So they, yeah, he buried the championship either way. So, yeah, you're right. They might be going away, and WWE might have just bought them flat out. Uh, but the lights cut out again at the end of this match. When they turn back on, uh, the dude who won the first match, Josh Briggs, is standing there behind Austin Theory. Crickets. <laughs> yeah. You could have heard a mouse like, um, fart in the back row. Oh, God, it's you again. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you? Yeah. Don't you have something to do? <laughs> well, Austin turns around. I felt bad, honestly, dude. I really did. So did I. Because they were, like, putting this over. This is their next big feud for the Evolve title, obviously. He turns around. Josh hits him with the M6. And, again, effing crickets as he holds up the title. And they're like, quick, hit his music. So there's something. Ah, oh, it was brutal. I'm like, just go home, dude. Get out of there. Just, just go. No, like the the crowd acted like we don't care about you. <laughs> it was kind of sad. Uh, and I don't watch Evolve, so I don't know this. By the way, getting back to if I don't know if WWE bought them out, but the commentators were putting over like WWE product fairly hard on this. So I don't know if it was just a one time thing or if they're going there. I don't know. Um, but the final match was Adam Cole, Akira Tozawa for the NXT title. Johnny Gargano came out in the middle of the match or late into the match, whatever, distracted Adam Cole. And I was like, dude, they're not going to have Akira beat him. There's freaking no way. And I was right. <laughs> Adam Cole hits him with the last shot to the back of the head uh, with a exposed knee, pins him. And then I can't remember what happened, but it like, didn't. Gargano get in the ring and Adam Cole just took off. Yeah. Yeah. They're teasing uh, the next takeover, <clears throat> I think. Hey, might as well. They put on, you know, seven star classics every time, man. So. Whoa, whoa, six. 
Oh, excuse me. Not quite seven the Omega in, and Okada. Seven of us in Tokyo. Oh, duh. But yeah, they had a cool close. Uh, Johnny got like cheered like a god by their by the crowd, and he put it over huge. He used to wrestle there and everything. Huge. So uh, overall, not a bad show. I, that's the first time I've ever seen an evolved show start to finish. So, yeah. Any final thoughts on that? Yes. Do more and more, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, but yeah, that was that was uh, night one of the festivities in Philadelphia that uh, that weekend. Thanks for watching this YouTube exclusive video for the podcast Wrestling Society. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're picking up what we're throwing down. And of course, we always welcome feedback in the comments section down below. And if you want to keep up with the weekly podcast that drops every Wednesday, links to the show page are in the description down below, along with our social media handles and our associates pages. Come on and join the society.